So you want to make a sick spaceship, but you're not really sure where to start. I'm going to be giving you an updated rundown of my method for creating some sick spaceship materials right inside of Blender. Today, we're going to be making use of the awesome space opera textures from FraserFX.com. So let's dive right in. We've got this awesome spaceship by Alexander Ivanov. You can get it from Digital Shipyard on ArtStation. Alexander has kind of separated the different parts of this model into different material groups already. I'm just pulling up space opera textures. One of my favorite types of textures for this is just kind of a generic grungy sort of texture. It's going to look really good tiled across this entire spaceship here, as we can see. After plugging it into the base color, we will put a color ramp in the middle. I'm just going to start off by deleting this handle here so we can start by picking whatever we want our base color to sort of be. I just want it to have kind of a dirtier look. Then we'll add in the second handle again, and we'll mess around with this value a little bit. We'll bring down maybe the value and we could bring up the saturation. I like that. That's a that's a good base, I think, for some surface imperfections. I think this looks pretty good. While doing your texturing, we can actually hit this drop down here. And under the render pass, if we choose diffuse color, we can get a look at only what the color pass of our model looks like. And this will give us that for the entire model. So this is a good this is a good tool to have up your sleeve when you are texturing inside of Blender. The next detail that I want to add is some some light scratches across the surface. I'm going to take again from Space Opera Textures. Let's try the Imperfections base color. It's got some little grunge, but the biggest detail here is all of these white scratches. Is that a mix RGB node? Plug it in and we can change this to screen perhaps. I don't know what it is about making the scratches lighter, but I just I just enjoy the look. What we're going to do is we're going to add some dirt to the crevices across the whole spaceship. We'll duplicate the mix RGB and we're just going to add in an ambient occlusion node. It's just really smooth. We could actually go back to the blue concrete. This time, why not use the base color? The base color looks like this. It's got different colors and we'll plug this into the distance of our ambient occlusion node. We're going to add a map range node in the middle here, and this is going to allow us to control that range a bit better. So if we bring down the two max value, you can see that we're getting ambient occlusion sticking out in some places, but like it's way grungier across the whole surface of the ship. So this part just takes some fiddling around. You can pull in a color ramp here. You can kind of do whatever you want. Maybe we'll bring this back up to one because I want to have some noticeable dirt kind of poking around more. I don't want there to be lines everywhere. I want there to be some, I want there to be bits of dirt in some places, but not everywhere. So what we can do is we can take a noise texture and using mix RGB, we will use the screen function, a color amp, just to add some more contrast. Here's a good example where there's a lot of detail in the back. I think it looks pretty cool. Another thing that I'm, we're just going to try this. We're going to see if this works is I'm going to take another ambient occlusion node and I want to say, okay, I only want there to be dirt in the like crevices inside of crevices. You know what I mean? So like on these random little extraneous bits sticking out a lot, I don't want there to be as much dirt as like the dirt in these crevices here where there's a lot of, where it's really tucked away. So we're going to go ahead and plug in this ambient occlusion node here so that the light parts get lighter. But yeah, you see some of these dark parts where it's really tucked away, they get a lot darker. And then we can take another color ramp here and sort of bring in those black values. So we've got this really nice crevice map looking stuff going on here. This is what that node tree looks like. We've got a pretty cool looking dirt setup. So we'll take that output and we'll plug it into the mix factor of our mix RGB node. We're going to plug this into color two. And now color one is whatever our, we want our dirt color to be. But we're going to explore an alternate method of handling, which is going to be, it's pretty similar, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our ambient occlusion here, and we're just going to increase these values even more. We want this to expand out some more, maybe even as far as two. We even want the minimum values to come up a bit. So we're still going to have a bit of randomness here and there, but it's less noticeable and the dirt comes out way larger scale. We also can still have some of this noise subtracting from it, but I want that to be less intense, but we're not taking away all of it. A bigger, wider spreading ambient occlusion. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our ambient occlusion and this is gonna act basically as our dirt color. So we can bring in the black a bit. And on the other side here, I wanna bring in another color handle and we're gonna make this like, we're gonna make this like a dirty, kind of a brown color. So I don't know what it is about this kind of effect, but the effect of being like, we're going from a dirty brown color to black, and then maybe even to something else interesting. And honestly, I really like the way that this looks. With this new method, we're gonna take this instead and put it into the color two, 
and we're multiplying it on top of our original color. Now look at how much just dirtier our ship looks. Our multiply factor doesn't have to be all the way at one. We can bring it down a bit. And I just, I think that like build up in the crevices here, like you can kind of see it's, there's a bit of like discoloration. And I think that that sort of build up effect is, I think it's really cool. Something else we could even do is if you want to play around with it more, you can choose like different colors it can be fun. Like if we bring that out, actually, I kind of like that. Like it's a very, it's a very subtle effect, but we're getting like some light blue tinting to the surface of the shader. And we could almost leave it how it is, but there's still one more thing that I want to do. And that is some detail on the edges. Now, if you've seen one of my more recent videos, you know that there's a really cool technique we can do for this edge detail using the bevel node. And we're gonna make use of basically that same technique here, but we're gonna layer it a little bit. We're gonna take two bevel nodes, one with the radius set to zero, and the radius on the other one can be whatever we want it to be. Take a new mix RGB node and plug both of these in, and we're gonna change this to difference. If we turn this all the way up, we get all these crazy colors around the crevices of our object. We can bring this up or down or whatever we want to do. But you can see that now we're getting this crazy like neon outline effect. Now we want to take away the colors. We just want to be looking at black and white. But some of the colors through a color ramp are going to look brighter than others. So what we actually want to do is we want to take a separate color node and change it to hue saturation value. And we're going to take a look at the value output. But again, we're running into that issue where it's like this perfectly clean outline around the entire object. And just like before where we added in some different textures to add imperfection to that, we're gonna do the same thing with our bevel node. So maybe instead of using the concrete texture, and this is one of my favorite textures. This is the one that I used, I think, for that edge color tutorial. And you can see it's got a lot of fun scratches. It's got some smudges. It's just an all around fun, fun texture. And we're gonna plug that into the radius of our top bevel. And we'll add in a color ramp. We can maybe bring up the, the lower value just a little bit. We're going to take the upper value and we're just going to darken that a lot. We're getting like these scratched up looking edges, which adds a lot of fun detail. Now, the way that we can add this on is just by adding in a mix RGB node and setting it to screen. I think we're actually going to change textures. Maybe we will go with a blue concrete texture. So we can even, we can mess with this upper radius a little bit. I told you that I wanted to layer this and we're going to duplicate it. We're going to put it right in the middle here, right before this one. And this new one that we've just made, we're gonna set this to multiply. Invert our value. And now we're gonna mess with our color ramp here. We're gonna mess with our radius because we want this darker one to come out a little bit further. Maybe add in a gamma node here. Maybe we'll bring the radius up a little bit more. I think we can go values above one. Yeah, we could even set this as high as like two. The radius of our bevel is obviously coming out a whole lot more. Like we're getting a much wider spread. I think the, the black right now is a bit too much. So we could dial that down a bit. This edge technique with the layering of, you've got the, the dark edges sprawling out a lot, and then the really tight white edges, I think it looks really, really nice. Especially when you combine it with that crevice dirt that we did with the ambient occlusion before. It all starts with the color ramp, and we're gonna make it red. By changing this to just be a solid red color instead of actually using the underlying surface imperfections map, I think it looks all right. And honestly, I wouldn't really change anything else about this because we already have so many layers of surface imperfection layered on top of it that it doesn't need it doesn't need much else. And we can change this up a bit if we want to. If we want to take this and make it darker, it's cool because really all we got to do is just kind of update whatever the whatever the base like color feeding in is but there's still a whole element of creating awesome sci-fi spaceship renders that we haven't even touched on. So if you wanna find out how to make the coolest planets for your scene, watch this video all the way to the end to find out how to make a super cool, realistic alien planet.